Hi everyone, welcome to the June Garden Tour. We didn't get a garden tour filmed in May because we were busy wrapping up my new book, the photos and the manuscript. So I am really excited to show you a lot of changes that have been going on in the garden. But I thought I would start up here on the container garden because a lot of times we leave this to the last, then we end up having to skip a lot of it. And with all of our container garden videos, I thought you guys li might like a little more detail about what's going on up here. So I'm just gonna start over here with the strawberry crate tower. I actually just replanted some of the strawberries in here. I had a whole bunch of mustard greens in here before. So I put some brand new plants in here which brought new life to the tower and they're growing absolutely beautifully. I put this little kind of soft white flower in the middle to kind of bring in the bees and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of this flower but I think it looks super delicate and very pretty in here and I did go ahead and mulch the top with some shredded straw. We did have a couple of weeks of very hot weather. It's cooled off now but if you put straw or mulch in your containers, it is gonna save your containers from having to water so much. Really a lifesaver in the heat. So the strawberry tower is looking good. I actually just hung a little hanging basket right here. I need to get a little hook for it, but it's doing pretty good right here for now. And this is a tomato here. I think it's called the Solano tomato. It's an All America Selections tomato. Really, really sweet and tasty and so much fun to just pop right outside my back door and just pick a couple of tomatoes or even just snack out here right in the garden. And down in the bottom of the Smart Pots here, um, this is called a pot of pepper, I think it's called. It is also a All America Selections variety, which are always really, really productive. It's a small container pepper and it's a, it's a version of a jalapeno, and you can see there's little tiny jalapenos starting to develop. So there is a lot going on in the garden. It's really fun. We've been harvesting a lot. I'm sure you guys watched the eggplant video where camera guy grilled eggplant right over here. So we spend a lot of time up here, and I love being able to pop out, just grab some vegetables when I'm cooking. So this is a long uh, raised bed here by Smart Pots. It's a six foot raised bed. It fits perfectly if you have a small space. It's a really good option and some greens in here. You can really pack a lot in here. The kale, we've been grabbing this for smoothies almost every morning. Put some strawberries and some other little trailing flowers along the front. The bees have really been buzzing around here. So make sure that you plant pollinators or flowers in with your vegetables to bring in the pollinators. Now in the middle of the garden bed, I put some beans. And I think these are, if I'm not mistaken, Blue Lake bush beans from the bean seed collection and beans are a quick grower. You can plant them all summer long, every couple of weeks to keep the harvest coming. So when you have one crop um, dying out, you have another crop to take its place. Now, if you're growing in a small space, which I know a lot of you are, you do wanna make sure that you plant a lot of vegetables that can grow vertically. That's really the key to growing a lot of veggies in a small space. And one of my favorite trellises we installed this last summer, I made out of tree branches when we trimmed some trees from our backyard. It's a super easy trellis to make. So if you've got trees to trim, all you have to do is kind of lay it out on the ground in a grid pattern and wrap twine around the parts where the branches cross and then make a couple of branches a little bit longer so you can stick them in your raised bed on the ends. And here we've got some cucumbers growing up this trellis. And I just saw here this kind of misshapen cucumber. These are long uh, Japanese cucumbers, I believe. And the heat sometimes will kind of misshape your cucumbers just a little bit, but that's no big deal. They're still perfectly good for eating. So we definitely need to be harvesting that one. Now, one of my favorite vegetables is cucumbers. So I always plant a ton of cucumbers, plant them every few weeks, grab a new container and plant some. And if you guys remember our cucumber video we did not too long ago, I just wanted to show you guys, so exciting. These little cucumbers we planted from seed. And Mac, you're gonna have to scooch over just a little bit there. There you go, buddy. We planted these from seed in one of my Cali Kim five gallon smart pots. And it's always just so exciting to see the seeds germinate and bust through the soil. And they're already getting their first little set of true leaves. So let me know if you planted cucumbers after that video and if yours are breaking through the soil as well. And you can grab one of the cucumber seed collections and the Cali Kim five gallon smart pots. And I am running a sale this weekend, 15% off over at CaliKimGardenHome.com with the code GARDENFRESH. So it's not too late to plant some seeds. 
As you saw in our video this week, we absolutely love eggplant. And here's another beautiful variety. This one is called Patio Baby. It's also an All America Selections winner. And you can go over and check out their website. All their seeds are really, really productive. I'll put the link in the video description. This one's called, I think I said that already, Patio Baby. It's growing in a 20 gallon smart pot. So you really do want a larger size smart pots when you're growing um, eggplant. But this is a great container variety and it is super, super productive. So we're gonna love harvesting that. Now along the back of the rail here, you see I'm also utilizing um, my deck railings with these wall saddle planters. Now these are really cool because they drape over your deck rail. They have little pockets on either side. And here I've just got some petunias. I love the bright colors here um, on the deck and it totally brings in the pollinators also. Some purple kale, some red vein sorrel. So don't be afraid to mix up flowers and vegetables, different varieties of greens. And here you even have a little bean growing. So don't be afraid to just mix up whatever you can in whatever space you have to work with. Some strawberries are nice little spillers over the edge. Remember the thrillers, fillers and spillers? So in this case over here, the kale would be the thriller, the petunia would be the spiller, and then the bean would kind of be the filler, although it's sort of spilling over the edge as well. So make sure that you utilize every square inch of your, of your vertical space. Now you guys know how I love orange tomatoes. This is the Golden Jubilee tomato growing in a 20 gallon orange smart pots. This is gonna be a winning combination. I cannot wait for these to turn orange. Orange tomatoes are so sweet and tasty and this plant is doing very well on the spot. Now I've got a couple of peppers up here. I love peppers. It's fun to grow sweet and hot peppers. And these are jalapeno peppers. And peppers grow really well in a five gallon container. So Cali Kim five gallon smart pots is perfect for that. And they do like a little bit of support. So here I made another trellis out of tree branches and twine. And the jalapenos are absolutely loving this spot. Let me just turn this around so you guys can see these giant jalapenos. So we'll either be roasting these on the grill and then chopping them up for salsa, or just making some fresh pico de gallo or even some jalapeno poppers, which is really fun. Now, another one of my favorite peppers is the California Wonder. And this again is in a five gallon smart pots. So this is our DIY soil that we made on the Container Garden series. So if you missed that, go back and check that out. You can really save a lot of money by making your own soil. But look at these beautiful California wonders that are sizing up. Now they will turn a beautiful deep red color, but you can really pick peppers at any size, any color. I prefer these red. Not only are they super beautiful when they're red, but they're also very, very sweet. Now, if you guys watched our project video from a couple of weeks ago, we installed this trellis right here on the fence for the sunflowers. And I cannot believe how quickly they have grown in about a week's time. They were about here and they've grown at least a good six inches. I had to tie them up again yesterday and they are just getting ready to clear the fence. So that's gonna be a ton of fun. It's gonna be really nice to have a little wall, vertical wall of flowers here along the steps. And we, I planted some dwarf sunflowers too at the bottom that are kind of hanging over just a little bit. These are called the dwarf sunspot. So if you don't have a big space to grow sunflowers, these are about a two foot sunflower. They're from my sunflower seed collection. And I'll show you some down below. They're just starting to open up. They are just an amazing variety. Now you notice here, there's a little bit of powdery mildew on the leaves. I've never gotten powdery mildew on my sunflowers before. This is the very first time. So I will be spraying these with um, the bonide copper fungicide, which really does help take care of it. And I'll come through here and trim off the leaves that are affected too. You really want to watch for powdery mildew and prune the leaves as soon as possible because it does spread throughout very, very easily. Now let me just show you this beautiful little sunflower head right here. It's not open yet, but I love how the sunflowers look just before they open. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? I think sunflowers just scream summer. So let me know if you're growing sunflowers and what variety is your favorite, if you like dwarf ones or big, huge giants. Now we have been doing a lot of cleanup in the garden lately. We had it all laid out here for our book photo shoot. Lots of projects were laid out. And so we're really excited that we're able to clean it up, wrap the book photo shoot and work on the garden. So right here in the red planter area, you might remember from a couple months ago, this is where tons and tons of nasturtiums were growing and just spilling over the cement walls. And it was beautiful, but the heat took them out. They only last for a couple of months in the springtime. So I pretty much completely redid this area just a couple of weeks ago, 
pulled out the nasturtiums and I'd actually already planted some tomatoes here in the red planters, but they were getting completely shaded out. The nasturtiums were spilling and almost way up to here. So with a lot of sun, these will definitely start growing a lot more. And I am excited about these varieties. This one I grew last summer and didn't have in a good sunny spot. This is the apple yellow. Uh, again, an All-America Selections winner. I tend to grow a lot of those because they are very productive. And let me just show you this tomato. Whoops, a little lizard just went by. Um, it's shaped kind of like an apple. You guys can see that. It's really an adorable tomato and very, very sweet. I really love the yellow and orange tomatoes. The yellow cherry tomatoes, the smaller varieties, are seriously, they're like eating candy in their garden. They're absolutely amazing. So I also wanted to grow some herbs with my tomatoes. So down at the bottom, I planted some basil, some oregano, and then I wanted a lot of pollinators to come in here as well. So I've planted zinnias in the front here. These are the shorter um, red profusion zinnias. And then these are some of the California giants. Those are in my bring on the pollinators warm season flower collection. If you want an easy pollinator flower to grow and a flower that you can grow all summer, plant some zinnias. They're beautiful, they're brilliant in color, they hold up to the heat and they're so, so easy to grow. You can direct seed, plant seeds right in your garden beds. It's definitely not too late, just about wherever you live. And when you prune zinnias, bring them inside for cut flowers, they just continue to bloom. So they are just amazing flowers. Here's another one of my favorites. This is called the morning sun tomato, another yellow cherry. Again, it tastes like candy, it's so delicious. And I'm gonna have lots of herbs here. Basil and oregano always grow, grow, go very well with tomatoes. You can't have too much basil. It's really a match made in heaven. And you can see I've mulched again here with that shredded straw. I'm really liking the shredded straw. It has a really nice um, aesthetic look to it. It, it um, really holds up the moisture very, very well in the soil. It's very clean straw. This one I actually got from Kevin over at Epic Gardening and it breaks down over time to add more organic in the organic matter in the soil which helps loosen your soil up if you have heavy clay soil but really really helps in the heat so i am really excited to see how this garden bed does this summer we had some trees that were shading it out trimmed down just a little bit so it does get a few more hours of sun each day so i did plant some peppers here along the front this is a hot pepper and i don't remember the name of it but you can see here how it's growing is it's growing kind of upside down. They're kind of sticking up, which is kind of cool. And the one down here at the bottom is starting to change color. So people always say, how do I know when to pick my peppers? You know what, just try it. Just pick a few whenever you think they're ready and then try the flavor. If you think you want to leave it on a little bit longer, then just leave your next batch on a little longer and try it again. But actually, usually the longer that you leave it on, the hotter it gets. So these ones probably need to be harvested because we tend to be more on the mild, hot side of how we can uh, tolerate peppers. Now I'm really focusing on bringing in the pollinators this summer. So I planted a ton more zinnias back in here. These actually started from seed indoors a couple of months back. The California giant variety and I also got several different varieties from Baker Creek seed. So it'll be fun to see when they bloom because there is going to be a ton of color back here. Now what I also did though was sprinkle down some wildflower seed and they're just starting to come up here between the zinnias. So what I wanted was when the zinnias are ready to die out, we'll have some more little flowers to take its place. And these are a perennial wildflower mix. And I only planted them about a week ago. So it's pretty fun to see them coming up and it'll be really fun to see all the color when it blooms. Now a little tip to keep your flowers blooming all summer long is to plant both annuals and perennials. Zinnias are annuals, which means they just have one season in them and then they die at the end of the season. But perennials will continue to come back year after year. So I did the perennial flower seed and I also have some daisies, which are perennials. So at the end of the season, they'll die back. I'll cut them way back and the next spring they'll pop up again. So that way you have some flowers continually blooming and bringing in the pollinators. Now come on over here because I'm very excited to show you the blackberries. I think this is gonna be definitely a bumper crop this year. I absolutely cannot wait. It's probably the thing I'm the most excited about in the garden this year. Look at all of the blooms and all of the blackberries. I think I've had these blackberries in here for maybe three or four years. By far, 
This is the most loaded down I have ever seen these plants. There's just flowers everywhere, berries everywhere. I'm gonna be filling my freezer full. These are the most delicious berries you've ever had. Um, now what I did is, I really haven't uh, done too much to them, but in the winter time when the plants were dormant, I trimmed them way, way back. And I have done that for a couple of years, but for some reason, this year is an especially good year for the blackberries. So our favorite way to eat them is just put them over yogurt, but I know I'm gonna need lots more recipes. So if you have any really simple recipes for blackberry, whatever, please let me know. I would love to hear what you like to do with blackberries. And we'll definitely bring you along for our very first harvest of these because I am so excited. They are juicy and luscious and absolutely amazing. So let me know what blackberries you're growing and of course your recipes. If you think you don't have room to grow tomatoes, grow them in containers. They grow beautifully in Smart Pots 20 gallon containers. You want at least a 10, 15, even 20 gallon container for your tomatoes. This is the Golden Jubilee we did a video on a couple of weeks ago. I uh, added some more soil to it, put a cage in it. It is growing beautifully. The flowers did dry up a little bit in the heat wave we had a few weeks ago. So gave it a good dose of fertilizer. The heat wave's over, and well for now anyway, and hoping we get some more tomatoes soon. But there are a couple coming on on the bottom. So that's pretty exciting. And in here we've got a variety of eggplant that's in my eggplant seed collection. And I always forget how to say this. It's Listata de Gandia. So it's a small little white eggplant, maybe about seven inches or so, white with purple stripes. I'll show you another one of those in just a moment. And I just noticed here, this stem is getting so heavy from these tomatoes that it's kind of bending over the cage. So, um, you know, if that happens to your tomatoes, it's no big deal as long as the stem doesn't break. You can probably just tie it up and it'll be okay. Tied up to the cage here. This is the Chef's Choice Black Tomato, I believe, if I recall correctly. Um, yes, and it's got a good amount of tomatoes on it. So I'm pretty excited about that. You might remember from the garden tour a few months ago, the whole fountain planter was spilling over with nasturtiums. Those are long gone, but there are some other flowers in its place here. There's beautiful flowers along the back, which are really bringing in the pollinators. I love how that makes a nice backdrop for this planter here. And then this little sunflower popped up out of nowhere, a volunteer. So it's kind of fun. We have a lot of volunteer sunflowers in the garden this year. And here's the little eggplant I was telling you about, the Lista, Listra de Gandia. And this one I think is starting to come on. See this little white eggplant with purple stripes? Isn't that beautiful? That's gonna be a fun one. Now this is the area of my garden that gets the most sun, so I tend to plant my peppers here. I've got a whole bunch of peppers planted along this side, along with some chives, which did take a little bit of a beating from the heat, but the chives are very resilient. They, they just need a little haircut right now, and then they grow right back. They bounce back very quickly. Now I've got to show you guys my giant tomato. This is for the tomato contest over on Gardening Coast to Coast over on Facebook. So if you haven't joined the tomato contest, go over and check out Gardening Coast to Coast. All the instructions are there. You can join, it's a ton of fun. But these seeds were given to me by Cliff, our live stream moderator. This is called the Megadom tomato. Would you look at the size of this tomato? It is easily the largest tomato I've ever grown. Just about as big as my hand. So I'm really excited. I have one down here that looks like it's starting to turn. It got a little bit of sun scald and the heat a few weeks ago. These are gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait to harvest these and weigh them for the tomato contest. Now you can see here I have them covered with the net bags and that's because the rats like to take a bite as soon as it starts to turn red. So fingers crossed this will keep the rats away and really hoping I get a good harvest out of these. Now, if you've ever grown tomatoes in containers, you know that they're susceptible to something called blossom end rot. And that's when the bottom of the tomato plant gets kind of brown. In fact, this one might have just a tad there. It gets kind of brown and mushy, and that's usually due to a lack of calcium or inconsistent watering. Now, what I've been doing to really help with that is you might have seen my post on Instagram, is pr spray with this, a product called Rot Stop. It's by Bonide. It has nutritional calcium in it, and it really helps give the tomato plant or any of your vegetables that have blossom and rot a nice little boost of calcium to avoid that on the next vegetable that grows. So give that a try and let me know how it works for you. Now a cute little flower I'm very excited about is this uh, Profusion Xenia. 
I've grown red and white profusion zinnias for many years in my garden. These, they're all America selection varieties. This one is a bicolor. So it's got red or burgundy in the middle and yellow on the edges. I just think it's so, so beautiful. So you definitely want to check that out over at allamericaselections.org. It is a gorgeous flower that holds up to the heat. The colors don't fade. It really is great here in Southern California because we get such hot weather. Several more different pepper varieties along here. And here is another Lystra de Gandia starting to form here on this eggplant. And a tomato that I'm so excited about. This is Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato. Now this is in my tomato seed collection. This tomato is going crazy. It loves this spot, full sun in here. Not many of my tomatoes are in a full sun spot because I don't have a lot of full sun in my garden, but this spot it loves. It's growing like crazy. I've got the inverted um, double tomato cage here over it, and it's got tons of blossoms on it. No fruit yet, but I'm sure that's coming along. Now one thing you can do to help your tomatoes develop more fruit is just gently shake your cage. It moves the pollen and the flowers around. Tomato flowers have both female and male parts, and that will really help increase your production. So moving through the garden here, the sun's starting to go down. The garden is absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite times of the day. We love watching the sunset out here. But these are the scarlet runner beans. They're a great tall climbing bean. They make a kind of a nice privacy hedge back here too but I've been a little bit neglectful at picking them. We've been so busy with the book. We haven't got out here like I should. You can see how big they are, how they're bulging in the pod, way too big for eating, but they're great for harvesting and saving for seeds or saving the uh, seeds and drying them and then uh, rehydrating them like refried beans for salads or for even tacos. So I'll definitely get out here and pick them a little more often this week. These are the flowers of the scarlet runner beans. Absolutely stunning. The pollinators love them, the hummingbirds love them. So it's really fun just to sit out here and watch the hummingbirds enjoy the garden. So here is the Smart Pots Urban Raised Bed. It's a two by four. And we planted this um, a couple of months ago on how to plant a raised bed video. It's really doing amazing. Here's that little, little dwarf sunspot sunflower I told you about. I planted them along the edges of the raised bed, just starting to bloom. I love how they look. They're a perfect size for a small space. And in here we have the Tiny Tim tomato, which is kind of reaching the end of its life. Tiny Tim is a determinant tomato. So once it produces its crop, it starts to die. So we definitely need to plant some more seeds. And Tiny Tim is a great tomato to plant late in the summer with my late summer garden seed collection. So you have a fresh new wave of vegetables coming in after some of your early, earlier vegetables are dying out. And I did pop an eggplant in here too. I think this is a black beauty, which is the mammoth eggplant. I think it's the queen of all eggplants. So that'll be really fun to harvest that probably within a month or so. Now back here on the Smart Pots deck, again, I planted for the pollinators. I mainly planted zinnias back in here. I just wanted a blanket of color. So I've got zinnias here, zinnias here, zinnias in the garden bed along the fence. I can't wait for them to bloom. Hopefully by next month's garden tour, we can bring you along and show you all the beautiful colors that we have. Now, as we head up the hill, I wanted to show you some of the heat tolerant greens. Did a video on that uh, several weeks ago. Now is a perfect time to be planting greens that will hold up to the heat. We've got kale here in a five gallon smart pots. We've got chard in another five gallon smart pots. These greens love the summer heat. So if you're wondering why your lettuce isn't lasting, lettuce is a cool weather vegetable, but these will take the heat. So these are all in the heat tolerant green seed collection. Perfect way to kick off your summer salads. And I'll show you the, the heat tolerant or the summer salad station in just a moment. But let's move on here through the garden beds. We've got the eggplant we harvested the other night, long thin purple. Uh, this is a Taihi tomato, I thought, <laughs> but it's starting to look more like the apple yellow. So I frequently get my tags mixed up. Pretty sure that's an apple yellow, not a Taihi. And here we have one of my favorite, all time favorites, Golden Jubilee tomato. Would you look at the size of this one, guys? This is another orange one. Let me kind of pull that over so you can see that. So hopefully we get some more tomatoes on here. We don't have a ton of flowers yet, but oh, we've got some developing, so we should have more tomatoes on it soon. 
Now here to the entrance to the hill, we have the Gardener's Nocturne Arch. It's a very sturdy uh, trellis here, and I think it makes a really nice um, entrance. But we have um, the Sugar Baby Watermelon. This is from the, water, the Melon Seed Collection. Just starting to climb up the arch, be nice and sturdy for it, and I'll sling up the watermelon with pieces of t-shirt or pantyhose as it grows. We've got some zinnias just about ready to bloom here, doing beautifully, and some volunteer sunflowers. Now I have to say, this is the year of the sunflowers on the hill. I didn't plant any new seeds. They all popped up probably from just the birds dropping them from last year. They are just absolutely going crazy. They're 10, 15 feet tall, definitely clearing the fence over here, and I'm absolutely loving them. In fact, come on up here and let me show you these a little bit closer up. This one here was one of the very first ones to bloom, and it's actually starting to die off. But I'm gonna leave it in because the birds uh, actually like to peck at the um, the dried up flowers here and then hopefully that will help keep them off my tomatoes and then once the stock dries i can use it for a trellis for some other climbing vegetables and all the sunflowers in here are actually kind of shading out the tomatoes i have planted but i just don't have the heart to take them out i mean this one i don't have the heart to take them out the tomatoes would get more sun that way but i just can't do it we're gonna to have to install a stake for this one. I just noticed it's leaning over, but would you look at the size of this stalk? This has to be, see where a good place is, you guys can see it. it. Has to be at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half in diameter. It is just humongous. And I wanna say it's easily probably 12 feet tall. And there's all kinds of side shoots coming out with um, different flowers. Let's see if I can find some. There's some right here. So this is just a mammoth, mammoth sunflower. So maybe a uh, Jerry can back up a little bit and get some of the blooms and blossoms at the very top. And I'm gonna have to, I'm not even sure which variety this is because it's a volunteer. It looks much bigger than lemon queens normally get. So I'll have to see if I can do some research and find out. Now I'm really enjoying the ladder mesh arches. We did a video on that a couple years back. These are ladder mesh available at your local um, garden center, your local hardware store actually, in the masonry department. Makes a really inexpensive garden arch, a vertical growing uh, for your garden beds. But over here we've got some cucumbers that are growing up and hopefully we'll meet in the middle with some cantaloupe on the other side. But tons of cucumbers down here on this very sturdy arch. This is made, or very sturdy trellis. This is made out of a cattle panel. We cut it, maybe a third of a cattle panel, installed some really sturdy posts here, and the cucumbers are doing beautifully, just climbing up. Lots of different varieties in here, long, thin purple. You gotta come get a shot of this, Jerry. This one is uh, amazing. Long, thin Japanese cucumber, actually, not purple. That's eggplant. <laughs> To look at the size of this cucumber, it's incredible. So this is definitely ready to harvest. And we have some other varieties in here from my cucumber seed collection. So again, cucumbers are a vegetable that you can plant and grow and harvest all summer long. So here we are at the summer salad station, one of my favorite little spots in the garden because it's where I love to harvest my greens. Now we planted this out a couple of weeks ago in a video, how to make a summer salad station. You wanna go back and watch that because a garden fresh salad is one of the best and easiest things you can grow. So we planted some kale, a couple different varieties of kale, which is already coming up. Look at these beautiful little leaves here. This is the red Russian kale. You can see the stems are a little bit pink in color. We planted some other varieties of kale down in here, the um, blue scotch curled kale, so you can see how different the leaves look. Isn't it amazing, all of the variety and colors of nature? It's just so incredibly beautiful. And along at the, the end here of the summer salad station, there's some mature kale that we've been harvesting for our smoothie. So it's always good to have things growing at different stages, so you always have something to harvest. Once this batch is done, we'll have a new batch of kale to take its place. And we did change up some of the trellises here in the garden as well. These I, I took from another area and popped them in here. It's always nice to get a little bit of variety going. The cucumbers are gonna make a nice topping for my salad. And we probably have some that are just about ready to pick. 
that are going to make a delicious garden to table meal. Did you know that you can also grow tomatoes on an arch? We've got two of the large red cherry tomatoes on either side of this arch here and they are climbing like crazy up the middle and eventually they're going to meet in the middle. So maybe on next month's garden tour we'll have to see. But these are loaded down with tomatoes. It's going to be so amazingly beautiful when this whole arch is full. Now, right next to the red large cherry tomato is a zucchini plant, which I'm growing vertically as well. So I do try and grow vertically whenever I can to save space. It's easy to grow, a uh, not a tomato. Did I say tomato? I mean zucchini. It's actually really easy to grow zucchini vertically. Stuck a tomato cage over it when it was first planted. Then I just kind of weave the plants up through the tomato cage as they grow. You can actually prune off the bottom leaves here anything below the, um, the blossoms or the first set of uh, zucchini. The, the plant does not need those leaves. You can prune them off as close as you can to the stem though, because the, the leaves, the stems are hollow. And if you leave the hollow portion, uh, disease and bugs can get in. But close to the main stem, the stems are solid. So trim them right down here and then weave your zucchini plant up through the cage and you're going to be able to save yourself a lot of space. Now this here is my kitchen herb garden and I love this location because it's easy access to my kitchen. Steps outside, I can just run out here and snip some herbs for a recipe. So we've got lavender, rosemary, sage, some strawberries spilling over, some thyme. It smells amazing out here. In the smart pots, um, hanging basket liners here. We have some coleus. We've got some uh, more scarlet runner beans climbing up this trellis. Actually, we have a cucumber growing out of the hanging basket. You can also grow vegetables in hanging baskets as well as flowers and herbs. And chives along the edge, some flowers to bring in the pollinators, and a couple different varieties of basil and parsley. So there's a lot going on in the little herb garden. It's a really delightful little spot just to come out here and kind of sit on the edge, have a cup of coffee. So let me know what spot you like to sit in your garden. This is another one of my favorite spots in the garden. The scarlet runner beans are growing up a ladder mesh trellis. I think I might have planted only three or four seeds here but I absolutely love how it kind of frames the entrance to the garden. It's really fun not just to plant things that you love to eat, but things that you love to look at and enjoy, and things that make you feel at peace and feel happy, where you come out here and you can look around and see the beauty all around you. Just wanted to wrap it up on the deck here tonight and share with you something we've been enjoying. It's been bringing us a lot of peace and relaxation every night is the hummingbird feeders. So every night we sit out here and watch the hummingbirds just swoop in here on the feeders. Sometimes they're kind of fighting and Jerry's actually been doing a little bit of research on hummingbirds and learned that they can be kind of aggressive, but it's very fun to watch them. And just a little tip too on your hummingbird feeders, you really only want to fill your feeders with a little bit because during the hot weather, you need to change out the um, water sugar solution every day so it doesn't get moldy and mildew and damage the bird's tongue. So you want to use four parts water to one part sugar and you will be amazed at how the hummingbirds come into your garden. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the June garden tour. Let me know what you enjoyed, what tips you're going to put into practice in your garden and what you're enjoying about your garden this summer. Make sure you head over to calikimgardeninghome.com. Use the code GARDENFRESH to get 15% off seeds, containers, and my book. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.